There's growing evidence that Elon is sticking true to his word in slowly transitioning standard range vehicles over to lithium iron phosphate. For those who don't know, this is a very exciting battery development. As much hype as solid state or graphene batteries may generate, they really haven't been done at scale before, and lithium iron phosphate poises a whole lot of benefits that people can come to appreciate that I don't really think gets enough credit. So for one, it's already being built by CATL in China and it's been mass produced for the most affordable Tesla over there which has been selling incredibly well by the way. The Standard Range Plus Model 3 over in China has been using lithium iron phosphate batteries for many many months now and there's evidence on Tesla's website to suggest that they are actually going to start using lithium iron phosphate batteries in Standard Range Plus Model 3's coming to Canada as the Canadian website has now updated the tech specs page for the Model 3 showcasing a higher weight of about 300 pounds. So lithium iron phosphate cells are much cheaper to build because they do not require nickel or cobalt, which is great because cobalt is a very expensive mineral that often has been mined unethically, which is why it's kind of a dirty mineral in the EV world, one that everyone's trying to avoid if possible. And in time, Tesla is planning on phasing out cobalt entirely from their 4680 battery production, but lithium iron phosphate can do that now, today, as in they're already mass producing these batteries and they do not require nickel or cobalt cobalt, which are pretty much the most expensive elements that go into a battery right now. And with these batteries, they are less energy dense and they take up more space, but that does come with a couple of extra benefits. So for one, lithium iron phosphate has a pretty high cycle life, which means the number of times it can be recharged and, and used up again is a lot higher than the traditional lithium batteries that we're using in most EVs today. Typically you have between a thousand and two thousand cycles on a traditional lithium battery battery in most EVs today, especially the long-range Teslas, but with iron phosphate, you can actually start surpassing 2,000 cycle life, start hitting more like three or 5,000 cycles before the battery capacity starts to go below 80% of its original charge. So because of this higher cycle life, people in China with standard range Model 3s have actually noticed that within the charging indicator on Tesla's app, they don't really encourage you to charge to 80% on a daily basis and only charge to 100% percent on trips, they actually actively encourage people to go ahead and charge the vehicle all the way up to 100%, which makes sense because it is a shorter range vehicle, which means you would likely want to take advantage of higher charge capacities whenever you can recharge, and that means going up to 100% on a more regular basis isn't actually going to hurt it as badly. It will still hurt it. This is still a battery, and it still has to abide by the laws of physics, so there is still going to be some degradation. And yeah, for the record, if you choose to only charge your iron iron phosphate batteries to 80% every day, it will still probably last longer than if you choose to charge it to 100% every day. The only difference here is that the cycle life is so good that even if you are charging it to 100% every day, it'll still probably retain its original battery health as long as if you were only charging a nickel-based cathode battery in every other Tesla to 80% each day. So because of that, that's why Tesla doesn't seem to care as much, and these batteries, because they're less energy dense and you need more of them to fit into a 250 mile range EV, that's why the weight goes up a bit. So the energy consumed per mile is probably just a tad worse, but because the batteries are so much cheaper, it ends up not really mattering to most people. And that of course means that standard range Teslas can be made a tad more profitably. And now of course, finding out that Tesla is instilling lithium iron phosphate batteries into their mega packs means that they can have much faster rollouts of mega pack deployments, which is a huge bottleneck because there's tons and tons of of companies ordering these giant mega packs to build into the grid. Tesla can't keep up with demand, but if they're able to get some iron phosphate batteries directly from CATL in China, that means that, for one, they can roll out the mega packs quicker, but on top of that, the nickel-based batteries that are going into more long-range vehicles, like the Model Y, and of course, every Cybertruck is going to require nickel-based batteries that are most likely going to be the 4680s. More of those materials will be freed up, in which case Tesla can produce more vehicles as a whole, deliver more vehicles as a whole. So in other words, the more vehicles that Tesla can fit LFP batteries into, the better it is for the entire lineup. It's not just a benefit for the standard range vehicles. And the primary reason it's going to be a game changer for Tesla to scale up lithium iron phosphate is because the Model 2, as we like to call it on YouTube, although Tesla just keeps referring to it as the $25,000 Tesla that's coming out in around three-ish years in America. I wouldn't be shocked if it takes a bit longer, but that vehicle is supposed to 
to be pretty much exclusively on lithium iron phosphate. It's supposed to be a smaller vehicle, doesn't have any kind of crazy range, but by having more affordable production techniques, that's how they're going to get an electric vehicle that has around 250 to 300 mile range, but still start at $25,000 and CATL providing batteries as well as Tesla building up their own iron phosphate is the key to making these types of vehicles possible. So I'm not sure exactly when the rollout of the iron phosphate Model 3s to Canada is going to be or if Tesla is going to start importing a bunch of iron phosphate batteries from China and start instilling them in every North American made standard range plus Model 3 but that is something that Elon has alluded to in tweets in the past saying that when it comes to standard range vehicles that's kind of what they want to transition everything on to eventually which shouldn't be a huge concern for those of you who are interested in standard range vehicles. If anything, this is a reason to get excited because you're going to have that substantially higher cycle life, which means if you are the type of person willing to settle with a sub 300 mile range and the Model 3 Standard Range Plus seems fine for you, and you could see yourself buying one in the coming years, hopefully, if they can get the American made Standard Range Plus over to iron phosphate, that could mean you have much higher cycle life than all of the long range and performance made models. Model 3 counterparts. I think this is amazing because depending on the temperature and your charging habits and stuff, you could easily get your standard range Model 3 to last you well over 750,000 miles. That is if the iron phosphate battery chemistry allows for like a two to 5,000 cycle life. We're talking to easily surpassing a million miles within a single vehicle just because of how better chemistry the batteries are optimized for. And I think that's good news and something that not enough people get excited for. This this is the type of thing that's going to allow for a $25,000 Tesla to still have plenty of range and still have great battery health well after 500,000 miles, which most people don't even own cars for that long. But because EVs are going to require such little maintenance, and I'm guessing these vehicles are going to be so fun to drive and so practical, the reason the used market for Teslas isn't very interesting is because most people that buy their Teslas don't sell them, and those who do sell them don't really lower the price very much compared to new. In fact, looking around the Tesla website today recently, it still appears that buying a custom Model 3 new is cheaper than trying to find a used inventory one because all the used inventory ones are still way more expensive, even though they have tons of miles and wear and tear on them because their vehicles are just so dang likable, they don't depreciate very much in the long run. So I'm hoping that the rollout of these iron phosphate cells could encourage Tesla to bring back the standard range Model Y. I think that was a killer deal and I'm not sure why they took it away. Way. I'm guessing it was just too popular and probably not profitable enough for them to cannibalize the rest of the lineup. But if the iron phosphate batteries can be built cheaper to the point that a standard range Model Y could be built profitably and still be built at extreme scale, I would consider that a win in my book. And on top of all that, to imagine a Model Y that, okay, it doesn't go super far in a charge, but you could easily surpass 750,000 miles on the odometer and still have a range north of 200 miles. That's going to be quite an amazing vehicle vehicle that's very much built to last. So what do you guys think of having LFP batteries brought to much more vehicles in the lineup and what that could mean for the future and high cycle life vehicles? I've even seen a few people online say that lithium iron phosphate can output energy a lot faster than the nickel based batteries, which means that standard range Teslas with LFP could probably go a bit faster than Tesla is allowing them to right now. Maybe via software upgrades down the road, they'll let you buy performance boosts. All kinds of great benefits of iron phosphate phosphate that I hope Tesla can utilize and bring to more markets. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.